bars. <coughs> Hola, and from the Gophers. Oh, more people. Eva, Madrid, from Murcia. <coughs> okay. Hello, everybody. Are we live? <laughs> yeah, we are. Welcome back. <laughs> How are you? Well, that was professional. <laughs> Welcome to the October edition of the Madrid and Daracart box tastings. Yes. Um... Who have we got? <clears throat> oh, my dad is first, as usual. <laughs> and the Gophers. Hello, Gophers. Uh, Ava's in. Nina's Hello, in. Hello, everybody. Hello, people. We'll give people some time to we log in. We <clears throat> are going to start with some duties. Yet. Oh, you make it sound so From the serious. September box. Yes. So even though we finished the box, <clears throat> there is still some homework for us to do. Yes. We <clears throat> promised. So uh... We promised there were going to be a prize for those who upload a picture of the uh, bottles of the September box, and you mention our the name of the shop. Uh, and here we are. So I'm here in this website. Don't show them how we do it. Wow, secret, I want to, secret. I want to no, wait, but I want to. You put my name in enough it's, times. It's professional. So I have here the list <laughs> of all the people who have mentioned uh, the pictures. Upload the pictures. So and it's time you just, to. You just press a button. And by the way, this is the prize. The pago de carrovejas. So excited, Jesus! <laughs> Pull yourself together, Spaniard. <laughs> right. So. <laughs> Should I, press, should I press the bottom? It's so, so dramatic. Go on. Okay, here we are. Well, and the winner is... Can you see? Laura... Laura Silek has won. Silek. There you go. There you go. No. So, Laura... <laughs> Whenever you want... Here you have... A very fancy bottle of wine. Your bottle of Pago de Carabecas is probably one of the... Well, it's my favorite. It's your favorite one. Red wine. Yeah. What I liked about her posts is she basically forced her boyfriend to fill in that sheet every time. <laughs> and there was one time that she was like, apparently he doesn't want to do it. And she was like, we need to win this wine. And she sent him to find the sheet. <clears throat> so, well-deserved, Laura. Whenever you want. <laughs> the dogs agree, if you can yes. hear those. Come and pick up your fancy bottle of wine. That's enough of that. Yeah, let's uh, drink uh, today's first wine of the October box. I'm so excited. What are we going to drink, Mr. Daraka? This is a wine which I've been looking forward to since I tried it. Uh, I think I might have been a bit tipsy. I've only had this one, if you can imagine that. I think <laughs> I've only had this once when we went to, I think it was Peñin. Uh -huh. And we went to the stand of Bodegas... Bodegas, Bodega di Mateos, um, and they have their range of La Mateo, which is their sort of higher range. They've got their like the Tio Martin range, as we have. This is La Mateo, <clears throat> and of course, when you think of Rioja, you think of red wines, the classic red wines. However, this one, as you can see, is a white wine, um, and it's not a normal white wine. Oh, Fabio just says, "How can I win a bottle of wine?" All right, yes. First of all, you have to buy the box of wine. He has bought the box. The, the October one? Yeah, he, Fabio bought the box today. Oh my God. Then what you have to do is to upload the pictures of the bottles after the tasting. Like a selfie. And like you have to mention it. 
Okay, it doesn't matter if it's today, you can do it tomorrow. If it's within the month of October, it's fine. You are in the contest. So Fabio, a photo of you with your cats, for example, so, and this wine. So you have six chances to get in to, to be in the contest. And the more okay? time and if you do it all six times, you have six you know, yeah. more percentage chance of being picked. Exactly. And we haven't decided yet the next month's wine. We're gonna have a little look, but it will be a fancy. Of course. Wine. Have you already decided? Oh my god, no jit. Someone is not doing his homework. That's true. So let me say that again. We have decided what the next oh, wine of is. This oh. huge thing. <laughs> this is the price. This is. Uh, Fabio will <laughs> want this. <laughs> okay, this is uh, it's courtesy of Hispano Suizas uh, Winery. One of the wine in the October box is uh, wine from Hispano Suizas and they. Ooh. <laughs> they gave us the, this magnum bottle of their impromptu rosé wine a, yeah, so and this is going to be the price <clears throat> for this October box. I might play, I might try and win. <laughs> we haven't decided yet. Oh my god, look dark. I thought that was a gift. You embarrass me in front of all our friends. I thought that was for us, okay. <laughs> no. <clears throat> anyway, let's focus uh, on this. So yeah, Fabio, you will want that, so start taking selfies. Um, and for those of you who haven't got these wines, you can just drink along with us. Here it is. Now, I'm going to do something which all sommeliers hate me doing, which is when you open a bottle of wine, I just, I just rip the foil off. They hate that. <clears throat> sommeliers hate when I do that. Why? Why? <clears throat> oh, that's, it's weird, people. They're just, they're, so, it's like, sommeliers are weird. They're always like, you must take the <laughs> knife and you go one, Two, three, I'm like, just shut up and open the wine. Anyway, so this is a Rioja, like I said. And usually when you think of Rioja, you probably are going to be thinking of red wines. Yeah. This is a white wine. Rioja, probably the most famous yeah. brand of Spain. Have you ever heard about this deal? Small little... Maybe you haven't. Maybe not, yeah. It's very small, not very famous. But it's not very common for white wines. And, no. and, and when you do it's find... It's not their speciality, right? No, and if you do find a white wine, it's not usually this one. There's a more famous grape. Look at the indentation on that. Uh, that is almost pornographic. Well, <laughs> do you want to know a fun fact? And It has to be fun. <clears throat> this is fun. This hole... Now, don't make a... Grow up is called a punt. So that hole is called a, <laughs> it's called a punt. Really? Yeah, so you're putting the finger in the in the punt. It's it's lots of very funny jokes. But what what is the I mean of course that you have heard that the deeper is the hole the better is the wine. <laughs> have you ever heard that? I, I did. I have heard that. It's not necessarily better, definitely more expensive. Because it's more you need more glass to make it. Yeah. Um so all the fancier wines, top wines often have these big heavy bottles and more deeper things we are um, super excited of drinking this wine uh, we'll, we'll talk about the details in a minute first of all if you have got this wine salute cheers salut. welcome to october cheers. stick in the eyes in the eyes yeah. i'm so excited i remember this being very nice Ooh, <laughs> smells good right it's so good it's not i mean it's is uh this white wine is not the client the kind of white wine that you smell it and it's just, you know, it's, it's, it's complex. The aroma is complex. It's giving you a lot of information, mm. right? What? <laughs> it's incredible. Uh, I love this kind of stuff. Uh, well, cheers. Oh, that is amazing. So, well, actually, before we mm. do that, should we go through the sheet as usual? And this will help us talk yes. about it. Well, There's a lot going on in this one. With your box, you will have this... Uh, Technical sheets. Fabio, I'll we're... bring those two tomorrow. <laughs> he just took one wine. Okay. He's got this one. Okay, so uh, let's let's uh, fill the 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 technical sheet. Uh, wine, La Mateo Tempranillo Blanco, because they have different varieties mm -hmm. of La Mateo. There is a Garnacha, blah, 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 blah. A, an old Garnacha, exactly. Normal, so you know, Tempranillo. Tempranillo Blanco. White uh, Tempranillo. Tempranillo. We are Blanco. drinking 2017. 2017. I think the last one was 15, I can't remember, 16? Yeah. Probably 16. Um, but yeah, so it's 2017 and they make about 10,000 bottles only. And here comes the most important 
characteristic of this wine. The grape. Tempranillo Blanco. What? Why Tempranillo? What? What, what an extravagance! What the hell are you talking about, <laughs> man? Tempranillo is a red grape. I'm pretty sure it was a red grape, yeah. Yeah. Tempranillo is what we call an X-file. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> Tempranillo <laughs> Blanco. <clears throat> Tempranillo a- Blanco is what we call it. Have you got... It's, it's a... So, may I, can I get the history? Yeah, sure. This is, Rocky like said, it's an X-File. Oh, you've got the original photo. Yes. <gasps> Look at it that. It took me years to find it, but here it is. Look at that horrendous okay. photo. One so, day, 19, <clears throat> 1988. One day, 1988, there was a grape grower called... There was a poor <laughs> man in his vineyard... <laughs> called Jesus Galilea Esteban. And suddenly he saw this white bunch of grape growing in his Tempranillo. <laughs> As you can see, uh, there are both uh, grapes at the same time in the, you know, different colors. What is this? Oh, he was, he was excited and afraid, scared. <laughs> so... <laughs> There's some poetic license here. <laughs> and he looked and said, Jesus, is that you? <laughs> <laughs> so um, he uh, took the grapes and he brought them to the C- Consejo Regulador. The, the CIDA, the Rioja Regulatory Committee. And uh, they made... a. Uh, and DNA, DNA? Yeah, they did a little parentage test. And they discovered that it was, it was genetically Tempranillo. I think so, yeah. But there was a gene mutation, mm-hmm. genetical mutation. That's how the Murciano people were formed. Well, that, no, you don't want to know that. Oh. But I'll tell you later. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you, need, you, need more, you need more wine for that. <laughs> and... Um, uh, they discovered mm. it, it, mm. it was the same grade, but with a gene mutation mm. uh, and that only affected the color. So we had temporary year without color. That is the magic of this uh, grape. Now it has become an official uh, grape in the Rioja. It was in different it was, other yeah. regions. So it was, a, it was first permitted f- to make white Rioja in 2004. Um, and the first bottling was in 2005. So we're, it's not, it's a 15 year old experiment, even though it was in, discovered in 1988, it's only been allowed to be used commercially in Rioja stamp, Denominación de Origen Rioja mm. wine since 2005. Um, yeah, it's kind of bonkers. I mean, it's, it, it, it's got good alcohol, it's got good acidity, it's basically the exact same grape. I think nowadays, as they've been growing it, the only difference is they're like a little bit smaller, the leaves, than Tempranillo red, but it's like, <clears throat> just take the grape, take the color out, and you have this. Yeah. But it's, it's, it is, it's definitely its own, its own grape, but it's not very common. We have this one, and we have Javier Sanz. Yeah, Javier it's, not, it's not very common. No, I think Ejalba, Ejalba, Ejalba have one as well. Well, now it's, I mean, this is a, uh, if you saw it, this it is the like Tempranillo yeah. Blanco uh, vines nowadays, uh, not the X file we saw before. Um, <laughs> it looks more normal there. It yeah. still looks like a photo from the nineties. That one. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that was the next day. <laughs> oh my god! Um, so, um, what I like of this is, is how complex it is. Yeah, it's crazy, especially this particular one. Um, so this one. Well, hang on, let's. Let's do the color first, and then we'll talk oh, about the alcohol. Fourteen percent. Oh, uh, no, a bit, a bit less. This this vintage, thirteen. Thirteen. Last year, I think it was fourteen. Fourteen. Well, I mean, fourteen percent. Yeah, you know, white is remarkable. It's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I think usually Moscatel is like, yeah, fourteen, and everything else is left. Okay, the producer is the Bodegas de Mateos, yeah. D Point Mateos, and the region Rioja, as we said before. So let's let's talk about the color. I mean, it's, it's more yellow than the <clears throat> normal. So uh, officially, oh. this would be straw gold, gold. yellow gold. Um, <clears throat> now, there's a reason for this. Um, well, there's two reasons for this. First of all, it's from 2017. So it's not an old white wine, but it's not of the year. But as it says on the back, it's been barrel fermented. So it's been fermented in a barrel for six months. Uh, sorry, no. It's been barrel fermented, and then it's been in the barrel for six months. I should say, clarify. It's not not been fermenting for six months, um, so it's going to be having some of that exposure to oxygen in the barrel, and then it's spent another, you know, good whack of time, a couple of years, 
in the bottle. And that is what happens when you start essentially to a greater or lesser degree aging white wines. They start off paler, more yellowy, strawy color. And then they start to go more golden with age. So if you get, well, for our Christmas last year, we had the, and my dad and my mum will remember this, the Vigna Tondonia Reserva. Oh. Oh. Which is like, looked like marmalade. But that was too complex for me. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> I remember you going, what? what? The, the last Christmas we had uh, our... It was a 20-year-old uh, wine. Our right? Christmas uh, dinner, business Christmas dinner, with our friends, the distributors. Well, and friends. Mm. They are not friends. Drinking partners. <laughs> <laughs> no, they are g very good friends. Um, and we brought really good wine to that dinner too, too good I think someone <laughs> had the great idea to choose a Mexican restaurant <laughs> yeah he was like let's have so Mexican we're like really? we, we had a 1998 Dom Perignon with Totopos <laughs> so it was like who would like who would like the 1994 Gran Reserva Vigna Tononi with these arepas <laughs> you know that's not oh Mexican God. but yeah it was funny it was um, but it felt it felt both decadent and luxurious in one yeah. go <laughs> it was like we spent all of our money on wine so let's just have burritos um, but anyway the so colour color. and it's beautifully clear yes um, if a, in a very old white wine you might get it more a bit more cloudy if there's any if there's any sediment at all there shouldn't be sediment but you can sometimes get maybe tartaric crystals building up which can fall out or cloud it up a little bit but generally most white wines are going to be nice and clear because that's how you ferment it um let's talk to you about the aromas and here yes. he, here it goes here it goes look darker he's so excited okay look darker tennis balls <laughs> not <laughs> tennis balls um <laughs> so you've got <laughs> Get your mind out the gutter. Well, you, I get, I get, a, I get something buttery, creamy here. You get real, yeah. There's a, there's a, um, a little uh, bit of a van vanillary, honey creaminess to yeah. it. But what is over the top is this little smokiness. Do you get the honey here? If you don't, you're wrong. <laughs> um, there's a little bit of. What, what do you think? I mean, uh, I want to, I want to listen to. I don't know uh, who has uh, it. Followers. Fabio's got it. Oh, Nina, interesting story of its discovery. I never knew, but have tried Tempranillo Blancos and them. Oh, wicked. And that's uh, Nina's Cheers. from Southern California, I think. Yeah, Southern California. That's good. Um, Nina, by the way, if you could let us know which Tempranillo Blancos you get, that'd be really cool. Uh, <laughs> Fabio <laughs> says Yeasty AF. <laughs> He's so cool and down with the kids. Um, there is something bakery as well. Yeah, yeah there's these lovely patisserie yeah. notes. What do we call it? Boyeria. Boyeria, in, yeah. In Spanish, boyeria. The, that yeasty aroma that reminds you you know the bread croissant 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 or croissant in spanish and a little yeah all those kind of champagne notes you know and mm. i get a little bit of smoke like a little bit of smoky spiciness oh it's it's uh, it's complex so yeah but it's it, I, at the same time it's easy to drink i mean it's not it's it's, it's complex aroma mm. it's not complex but it's not a difficult wine no it's not a difficult wine so i think where, where it says here uh, quality of the aroma five stars and where it says complexity i think 10 stars yes <laughs> um now before we carry on i want to talk about aromas okay time to listen to the story of the tennis balls <laughs> now so this is a thing we often at this part of a tasting you go oh what can you smell what can you smell great and you move on but we don't actually kind of cover the without wanting to sound boring, the slightly more academic side of aromas. So there are three types of aromas, primary, mm -hmm. secondary, and tertiary. Mm -hmm. um, primary aromas is literally the, the aromas, the smells, the sights, well, not the sights, the smells and the aromas that you're getting from the fruit. So Tempranillo has a certain smell about it. That is what the grape Tempranillo smells like when it's made into wine. For example, Garnacha, Grenache, often has these slightly more red fruits. And that's almost, irregardless of where you make it, Garnacha will still have something integral that is Garnacha. So that's the primary aromas. So a young wine, any young wine, is going to be, boom, primary aromas, and out. Then you have secondary aromas. Now this is what is usually called the winemaker's part. So... In this case, uh, fermentation in barrels. 
Sometimes you have things like malolactic fermentation. Even barrel aging um, is considered uh, secondary. Uh, what's the other one? Carbonic maceration. Anything that you do to change the wine, that's the secondary aromas, which can sometimes be, not confused, but similar to the tertiary aromas. And that is aging usually more what happens next in the bottle. So here, you're going to have some secondary aromas from the barrel fermentation, those that you were saying, it's kind of pastry notes. This has spent six months on the lees. And what are the lees? The lees are the, these little rests of yeast, uh, little parts of the skins, little part of the grapes that, you know, remains in the, in the bottom of the barrel. And when you then age it in the bottle, everything starts to relax. Um, so if it's a red wine, often the tannins fall out because they start to clump together and with gravity they'll fall out. Acids, alcohol, all these chemicals. Wine is not stopped when it's in the bottle. Everything carries on. Things stick together. Things move apart. Things get looser, whatever. And with white wine, when you bottle age, and this is still comparatively young, it's only 2017, you might get things like honey coming out more. You might get nutty notes and you might get smokier notes. So what you have here is a little bit of toasty vanilla-ness, which we could say is probably the secondary aroma, which is that human manipulation in the winery with your uh, fermentation in these French and American oak barrels. And then you'll get these tertiary aromas, which are going to be essentially almost like an extension or an evolution, an organoleptic evolution, if you will, of the secondary aromas. And there are still some primary aromas in there. I mean, the fruit there, I mean, I don't know what you guys get at home. I'm getting things like maybe apricots and uh, maybe some white flowers, that kind of stuff, which are the things that come from the fruit itself. Um, but as you'll find, the older a wine gets, the weaker the primary aromas get. And then you might get to the extent where you have a Gran Reserva Rioja from 25 years ago, and it just smells of tertiary stuff. And that's where you get all these things like, oh my God, it smells like leather and suede and tobacco, this kind of things. Or Pinot Noir often just smells of mushrooms and forest floor. So I thought it's worth pointing out, it's all fun and games. It's all fun and games going, oh, I can smell lemons. But it is interesting to note what these three little stages are that you are looking for. So when you're in the wanky wine world, where you're analyzing wines, especially if it's for a qualification or I guess for a blind tasting, you're really trying to pinpoint what am I smelling and what does that pertain to? So when we do our wine clubs and we try and be like, okay, I'm smelling this, I'm smelling that. What could that mean? It's probably had some oak. It's probably had this and that. So yeah. Let me check if there's anyone out there. Is everyone? Everyone's gone. Yeah, cool. Oh, what's that? Everyone said that's so interesting, Luke. <laughs> Eva, vanilla, Danish cookies. I love it. Yeah. That's the, the battery. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eva's good. She's got a good nose. Yeah. Better than you. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. So the aromas for me is, is almost... Of, of course, I love the effects of the drinking. But for me, the same with whiskey. My favorite bit is often just... Smelling it, and this is, is delicious. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and then the palate. In the palate, yeah. So those of you who yeah, have, have this, be more. those of you who have this. Please, look down at that. Oh, so good. It's full. Well, let's, let's, let's measure the acidity of this one. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. I mean, this, again, it's not a super old wine. I think this is going to be finished tonight. Pretty good. Yeah. Now, I have another thing to mention. Oh, carry on. I have a question. Oh, God. Here you go. What is the difference? This is white wine, and that's red wine. Oh, yeah. then it's fine. Sorry. No. Oh, no, but... Another one. Okay. <laughs> You know, um, normally this is a this is a question that uh, we often have in our tastings. Uh, the color of, of the wine comes from the skins. Mm -hmm. and and, well, yeah, on a basic level. mainly. Mm. And um, but you, if you don't use the skins, you can make white wine with red grapes. That's what, for example, we make in, in Champagne. We use Pinot Noir, 
for uh, making a white champagne. Um, so we don't use the skins. Is this something similar? It's like a it's like a wine made with a red grape without the skins, or here the skins is given some information that you cannot compare with those kinds of wines. You know what I mean? No. Okay. So, do you mean can I have can I have white Pinot Noir? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Is this this white Tempranillo is the, oh, I is see. the same? No, um, because this is a mutation. That is a good question. Oh. Of course. <laughs> I see what you mean. Okay, my. How do you call this? Calva? Bold? Bold bastard? Bold. <laughs> um, <laughs> no. In this particular instance, no. Tempranillo Blanco is a separate thing. Because it mutated, it's, it's no. Lo I mean, who knows? Who knows when it uh, uh, first appeared in reality? Jesus, Jesus, saw it in 1988, but. It had probably been changing over time. Who knows? Maybe it was that was the first thing. Who knows? But it has split off to the point where it has become demonstrably different. I mean, this is a white wine, pure blood. If you take Tempranillo and you take the skins off and you make a white wine with it, remember we had that Bobal with no skins? Yes. And you could almost smell something like almost strawberries. It was kind yeah. of weird. Not necessarily the nicest thing in the world. No, last week, right? Yeah, it was like, this is weird. But this is, it, it is its own grape. So it's Tempranillo Blanco because it is like Garnacha Blanca. Yeah. It's, it's, it is, it's split off. But that's a good question. Well, um, more themes. I Balance. Love, I love this wine so much. <laughs> so freaking good. Balance? Absolutely. Yeah, it really is. I think they've balanced really well, especially in the palate with the acidity, which isn't too high. Um, which I want to mention very quickly, uh, this was discovered in the area of Rioja, which we'll talk about more in a minute, um, Rioja Baja, or the new name Rioja Oriental, we'll talk about Rioja in a moment, um, and that is a hotter part, so generally these wines can be low acidity, but they've managed to keep this one nice and crisp, so I'm really impressed. And the finish is longer, longer than life, it's, it's lovely. And it goes on and on and on. Is there pairing? How will you pair this wine? Before, before I came here, I talked to my sister in the phone, on the phone, and I told her go to the supermarket and buy your favorite aperitifs because this is gonna pair them perfectly. Any kind of charcuterie, any kind mm. of cheese, any kind of even. I told her. If you buy, you know, these, uh, these totopos with guacamole, that's gonna, that, it's going to pair them as well. Oh, so Perfect. Should this, we have, we have this, this is a four wheels wine. Fish. I wouldn't pair it with meat. Not red meat. Not red meat. No. But fish, of course. But this with cochineal. White meat. Ooh. Yes. With, this is, this is co character. White, white meat. Any kind of bird. <laughs> <laughs> Any kind of pigeon. Pigeons. In your garden. Oh, I had a girl here yesterday. No, Turkeys, today. Turkeys, flamingos. If you can find it. <laughs> um, we had a girl here earlier and she um, she didn't buy this. It was too expensive. But I offered it. She wanted to have a dish with truffle. Yeah. She was making a pasta a la trufa. Oh, yeah. That, that, and I was like, oof, this yes. kind of powerful, absolutely spicy, smoky white will probably match that fungusy <laughs> yes. earthiness. Because it's got quite a lot of umami in this wine. Yeah. Sushi, I think. Creamy pastas. Pastas yeah, yeah. with, you know, any the salmon and cream pasta. Get oh, hungry. hungry. <laughs> Russian, Roque's Russian salad. <laughs> yes, that pairs everything. Everything goes with that, yeah. <laughs> um, well, temperatures. Um, well, with this one, interesting. Not that cold. Yeah, not, not too cold. Let, let the wine to express more what it has to tell you, oh, sorry, and that sorry. could be around 13, 12, 13. Oh yeah, yeah, I would say 12, 13 is good. It doesn't need to be freezing yeah, cold. Exactly. You know. uh, the price is not a cheap one. Unless you bought our box and you save money. Yes, you save money with the boxes, a lot of money, believe me. Uh, how much is this one? 21.90. 21.90, it's not cheap. It's a special occasion white wine. Yeah, um, you can, I mean, uh, you can find them 
normally, I mean, uh, in, uh, in, on the internet, you can, uh, internet is very tricky for the prices. Advice. Uh, probably you will find a shop where you will, find, you, you will see this wine for 16 euros. Lies. But remember, you have to pay shipping. Mm. And that's not cheap. And it's much more fun to buy the wine from us. Yes. So we uh, charge the normal price that you can find in any shop, but our shipping is free. Yes. And glass for this one, a nice big one. These big barrelly whites. Yeah. Nice big red wine glass. Yes. Wine. You know me, big, uh, big glass for everything. No, I mean, when, when the aroma is this complex and it has so much to give you, the, bet, the wider is the, one, the glass, the more are you, going, you are going to enjoy the, the, the aromas. Now, so. I feel even though many of you might think you know Rioja, I think we should spend a f couple of minutes doing a little refresher course about Spain's arguably greatest, greatest yeah. wine region. I mean, Rioja is the superstar, but where is it? What is it? Well, How is it? I have, Who is it? As always, I brought my map. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Roque Madrid's map. <laughs> here it is. Give me a second. I'm here. Here it is. This is Rioja. Rioja. Now that's Spain. That is Spain <laughs> and the, the dark, dark purple pink, pink area is Rioja. Rioja is not very big in extension. As you can see, I mean, there are uh, bigger regions, uh, as La Mancha or Rivera del Guadiana, for example. Yeah, it's kind of generic not, size. Yeah, yeah. Um, but remember, 50% of Spanish wine comes from there. Which is insane. One of every, every two bottles of wine, one of them is from Rioja. Which is why if you're in Tokyo, if you're in Kathmandu, yeah. if you're in Tanzania, if you're in Scotland, if you ask for something Spanish, you will probably be finding a, uh, a Rioja. Yeah, it's the first choice. If you ask for a wine worldwide, the first choice will be always Rioja. But there are subzones. There are subzones, yeah. Um, which I think is interesting because this is where Rioja gets a little bit more complex because Rioja is really, by speaking about Spain, it's a region of Spain and it's the smallest region of Spain. However, La Rioja wine region, as you can see on this map, it's actually a bit of a freaking mess. So yeah. <laughs> you have three main subzones. You can see there Rioja Alta, Alavesa, and Rioja Baja. So this wine is from Rioja Baja, right? While, I, while I'm talking, you pour some more wine. <laughs> Rioja Baja, which has actually been recently renamed Rioja Oriental, Eastern Rioja, to sound a bit nicer than Lower Rioja. It sounds more romantic. It sounds more romantic. It's hotter. You get a lot more garnacha planted there compared to Tempranillo usually. Rioja Alta is probably, you could say, the classic. Murder on the Rioja, Orient Rioja. <laughs> Murder on the Rioja Oriental. Um, Rioja Alta, you could argue, is the classic, so if my parents are still watching, they will remember a couple of years ago we went to Aro, near Logroño, and we visited all these classic things, Vigna Tondoni, Rioja Alta, all these kind of things. But there are a lot of famous wineries like Marques de Riscal, for example, in Rioja Alavesa. And Rioja Alavesa is not part of the region of Rioja. It's actually part the southern tip of the Basque country. Well, well that province is called Alava, which is uh, run by the city of Vitoria. So Alava, Alavesa, Rioja, is actually not Riochan <laughs> as a region. And there's also, if you look at the map, sort of, northeast a little bit there's a little bit in navarra as well there is also one winery whose wine we have sold and which my parents might remember it's got a, a sort of a cow on the label el ternero there is one winery it's not on the map there in burgos province so there's actually a bit of a mishmash the problem is a the classification is a mess you've got rioja alta upper rioja and Rioja, not Baja. <laughs> so it's or you've got Eastern Rioja, and then Upper Rioja, and then Alaves Basque. It's like, you can't have an upper if there's no lower. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah, everything, so, yeah. So the subzone's a bit of a mess. Everything's a little bit of a mess and crazy there. That's why vines 
you know, have this <laughs> that's why genetical find, mutation. Just like, I'm getting out of here. Um, so that's obviously a bit of a mess. As a, as a consumer, you don't need to worry about this on a day-to-day basis. But for us, it's a bit like, it's a bit of a mess. Also, it is true that, as Roque said, Rioja makes a lot of wine, which means there's a lot yes. of crap. Beautiful wines like this, but the two euros crap wine of the supermarket that you can use only for cooking. That's also for, from Rioja probably as well. I think more than ever, Vivino is your the, the application where you take photos. That is a secret it's weapon with Rioja. Best friend. Because it's, it's about 1,200 It's going to guide makers. you, yeah. It's going to guide you but yeah. on this. Well, the thing of Rioja, Rioja wine has like like a main characteristic it's a little bit lighter than the wines from the meseta from uh, ribera del duero or toro or this or the wines from the strong wines from the La mediterranean, Mancha, the, mediterranean yeah. um, the reason is is the location it's located all, all along the the this the rio ebro hmm. ebro river and it's like between mountains there are like uh, some mountains uh, on the top, all mm. the all the Cordillera Cantabrica that protects Rioja from the cold weather of Brexit the, the land, ba- the Basque Hills. Oh, sorry, will. from England. That's the only reason Brexit did not arrive United in Bilbao. United Kingdom, uh, not so united. It's a very ironic name. <laughs> <laughs> and also, it has mountains in the south that mm. protect from the heat of the peninsula so it have like a very privileged weather yeah it's kind of the, the goldilocks it's, yes it's like the dreamland for growing grapes mm. for that reason probably you get these more gentle reds with less bite less personal no it's not the it, word I, I think the word the thing is it's easy to make yeah. easy it's easy to no. make easy wines because a young Ribera del Duero can be like, <clears throat> but a young Rioja just tastes like juice. Exactly. So I think it's it's a yeah. it's a perfect place That's to make high quality that, and yeah. mass produced. Um, it has a strong French influence, especially from Bordeaux. It does. The thing is that in the 19th century, there was a, <laughs> a joke because it's mm, a little nice. aphid. Yeah. Called Philoxera. Lovely guy. Almost destroys all the bangers of France. Almost, he failed. <laughs> Just joking. We love the Someone point. is not doing his job. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mr. Aphid, you're fired. Aphid, fail. Coronavirus, fail. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> uh, this uh, little aphid almost destroyed the bangers, and there was like a migration mm. of farmers from French farmers from Bordeaux looking for uh, lands out of you know this little aphid phylloxera because it, it to the bordeaux or the bordelais defense they understood the 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 potential yeah of Rioja. and and, all, and a lot of them settled down here in this region that's why there is this french style in the wine and why we have oak aging in spain because the spanish were like hola como te llamas <laughs> uh, je m'appelle pierre uh. <laughs> hey, what's this? That's a barrel. This is a barrel for the wine. This is a barrel. Yeah, you put the wine in the... I don't know, it's like Mexican now. <laughs> Basically, Bordeaux, lots of yeah. oak aging, and then they kind of transferred that and made that thing more commonly used in Rioja. And if there's one region in Spain who loves barrels, yeah. Rioja. Thank, so thank you, for If you are looking, if, if you don't know anything about the Spanish wine, but you are looking for more gentle, more... Elegant, maybe. Elegant, easy to drink wine. Rioja is your choice. And probably that's the reason it has become so popular mm-hmm. because it's an all audiences wine. It really is. Yeah, basically. It's like the worst you can say is mm. it's never going to be offensive. Yeah. <laughs> the dog agrees. Yes. Um, now, let me just see if we've got any questions. Do you have anything else you want to say about Rioja? Well, Rioja is also... <laughs> Super great, really nice. <laughs> is the great land for rosés. And they have also cava. Yeah, official. You can officially cava. Not a sparkling wine. Cava. You can have cava. And I tried one I in the last ABC wine 
salon we had in the royal palace i, I remember because you kept going can i have some more can i have some more can i have some and more? it was the muga the sparkling wine oh my god i had i had like a stendhal syndrome there <laughs> you were like oh. yeah i, I remember it was I was amazing like, okay you coming over here like mm. yes but I, what i found really funny is ever since we went there and every time you remember you go we have to have that for the shop and you keep ordering sparkling but you never order the one you want i know that the day i do it <laughs> is 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 the last day is 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 the the end of this shop i will only sell that way okay fabio is officially uninvited to the next club because he says campo viejo cosecha 2018 has 3.8 in vivino that's because of english people <laughs> that's a good that's a good point I mean, Campo Viejo. Well, Vivina can be can be can be mis- misleading. Yeah, shut up, Fabio. <laughs> that's a good. That's a well. Yeah, that's the cosecha is at the young one. How many votes? How many votes? Campo Viejo. Three point eight, maybe has five three. million. <laughs> well, Campo, we should give it a chance. Mm. No, <laughs> that's not. No, funny. Campo Viejo. I like the reserva. It happens with all these, mm, you know, mega companies. Mega companies. The big ones, I mean, the, the main, the low wines is, are, are terrible, but they usually have very special top ones. Campo it Viejo. happens with, 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 uh, Marques de Riscal, Marques Ra- de Riscal. Ramon Delvao. Yes, they have like... And Campo super. Viejo, the Reserva is nice. Yeah. The Grand Reserva is nice. Okay, Borgogna bottle. Right. That's the, the shape of the bottle. So, interesting fact. Yeah. I think. And if you don't think so, you're wrong. This is a Bordeaux bottle. This, hang on, this is not Borgogne, is it? Borgogne is Burgundy. Yeah. Okay, just checking. <laughs> yeah, Bordeaux, Bordeaux, Borgogne, Burgundy. Yeah. The difference is these sh- shoulders. And you know why? You tell me. <laughs> so. Burgundy is made with that half-assed pansy grape from France called Pinot Noir. I'm saying this as a joke because next week we're trying the best Pinot Noir in Spain. But Pinot Noir, thin skins traditionally, not much sediment, at, if at all. So you don't need to worry about the bottle. And they had this lovely, elegant thing. Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot are heavier. What are you doing? <laughs> Look, Daraka. Thank you. Go to the gym. I know you can see you can see all the rolls. Exercise. <laughs> Terrible idea. Um, in Bordeaux, where you have these heavier grapes and heavier, drier wines, specifically Cabernet Sauvignon more than Merlot, you can get a lot of sediment. Um, it throws the sediment with age. So what you could do, maybe you don't have a decanter, you use the natural shoulder of the bottle as you slowly pour to catch all the crap here. Um, so it's, uh, this is what was traditionally called a Bordeaux bottle, and this is what was called a Burgundy bottle. But there's so many more shapes. Yes, so many. Oh, what a surprise. <laughs> so, uh, where's my wine? One, I mean, we have different shapes in... Well, this is a specific in this, shape. Yeah, this is in the box as well. An Alsace bottle. This shape will be in November's box. Yeah, this one here. This is this is happening more and more. Yes, we have the. I love it. We have the. It's Benedic- more like more compact. Yeah, with the Benedictus fructus from Ribeiro. Yeah, this is a new trend. Yes, and I don't know where it started. We will. We will investigate. We'll find out. Yeah. But this one, if you ever go to the Alsace, you buy a German yes. or a German Riesling. There'll be these lovely, elegant bottles. It will be in this flute bottles. Yeah, um, I love bottles. Yes, this is too tall. <laughs> one day in one of our podcasts, um, someone asked as why the amount of wine of the regular bottle of wine was uh, 75 centiliters. Uh, I can't remember. It's the amount of air a glass blower can put to Do create it in the one. Wow. And that is Jancis Robinson. I love that woman. Fabio, so, Fabio says 69 the, votes for the... For 69 the, votes is nothing, that's Fabio. Nothing. It can be the winemaker, family his and family and friends. I can, I can get 69 drunk British people in one second. That would vote anything. 
Apparently we did. It's called Brexit. <laughs> Whee! <laughs> Hashtag. Not just wine facts, you get politics on this channel and satire. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, so yes, now, uh, we've. I don't think we have any questions this week. Very disappointed, everybody. Yes. Um, apparently everyone thinks they know everything. So there's no questions this week. No worries. Um, no worries. I mean, I hate you all for no. not. Um, no consequences. It, yeah. No consequences. <laughs> it is worth noticing uh, that if you are in Madrid watching this, maybe you'll watch this tomorrow. Your mum likes the German wines in a blue bottle. Mum, I'm disowning you. <laughs> That's blue nun. <laughs> and it's not wine. It's good for cleaning the toilet and making it smell sweet. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> um, you can still buy, obviously, you can still buy the October box. Um... And if you want to buy, maybe you don't want to buy the whole box, you can still come in and buy them separately. It is worth noticing and uh, noting that if you live in Madrid and you think, oh, maybe I'll just buy the wine when I want, you won't be getting our amazing discount. Yeah. So we are, this box currently, we've worked seven, almost 100 euros of wine for 75. So if you are interested in trying some amazing wines at a real sale price, you can still buy the box. But if you want you to know. spend more money... We will not stop you. Mum, okay, not... This is like a <laughs> conversation with my parents. I speak to my parents more through these tastings than I do... In is that a your mum joke? No. <laughs> Fabio, shut up. Uh, not blue nun, just blue bottles. Oh, mother! Oh, I've got the thing for mum. What I call Rocky Madrid wines. Oh, <laughs> if, I ever get, if I ever get home, I'll bring you these. Well, yes. You will love them. You will love them. Um... It's not Rocky Madrid wine, it's that I'm pushed, because of my family, I'm pushed to, you know, pick up this very aromatic, semi-sweet wines from Spain. Normally are Muscats, sometimes no. Uh That wine to your family is like big red wine. But they sell very well, actually. Because you, yeah. <laughs> I think I've never sold one in my life. Okay, I'd like to... One day we will talk about your sherry wines. <laughs> Stay tuned for the next box. Um, well, I don't, there's nothing much more to say. There's no questions, so we, we could let these people go. Yes. I uh, think this wine is phenomenal. Actually brilliant. It's um, probably... Um, it's one of the best whites I have had in a long time. Yeah. So, yeah, in general even though we're focusing on this wine, do try and f get your hands on white Rioja. Because genuinely... Alma is great. Murviedro. Yeah, your family. Yeah. That's like my dad going, oh, that big Pe red wine people is People with good taste. It's a tremendous wine. Well, if Fabio likes it... He it's, really, it's, re it's really good wine. Um, try and get your hands on white Rioja. And if you can find a Tempranillo Blanco, have a go at that as well. Yeah. So I guess um, feel free to hashtag us, add us on the Instagram, put your photo up with a yeah. chance to win. Subscribe, give us a like, please. Oh God, we're saying that. Press the button of the bell. That will remind you. Press the bottom of the bell, not the top of the bell. <laughs> Press the bottom of the bell. Press the bottom of the bell. And um, <laughs> um, I'm going to jump in front of a bus. Thank you. Um, so I guess we'll see you next time uh, where we'll be trying Spain's top Pinot Noir. Oh my God. It's amazing. <laughs> that last this is coming from someone who doesn't really like Pinot Noir and it is amazing. Last San Roque, sadly I had to be here. I couldn't go to my hometown where I normally go every San Roque. This is, that's the 16th of August. And I had to stay with Luke. That was my other plan, plan B. Sorry. <laughs> and we opened that bottle of Pinot Noir, the one we are going to drink next day. It was, and it was smooth so as a peach. That's an expression I just made up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, well, I hope you enjoyed the wine. And yes. if you're watching this in the future, I hope you enjoy the wine. And uh, we'll see you uh, in a week. Yes, next Wednesday. Oh, by the way, Monday is my birthday. <laughs> so all of you send him a card. Cheers. <laughs>